Hey everyone, my name is Johnny and I want to share with you one of my favorite ways to capture a trip. This is called the drone boomerang and it's basically a way that you can capture a place in this sort of time-lapse meets selfie meets drone shot thing that I find really fun to capture a place and turn it into a really nice time capsule. They're almost like a combination of a selfie as well as a little Instagram boomerang, as well as a way to see the expanse of a place, the beautiful places that you are, to see them in a new way. I like to have a huge collection of these from everywhere I travel, and I go back and look at them, and they're really, really fun to reminisce about a trip. So let me teach you how to shoot and edit these drone boomerangs. Okay, now we're in Premiere. So. Let me show you some raw footage of these drone boomerangs without any time remapping or any editing so you can see sort of how they work. The key here, first off, is setup. You can see me getting all set up, making sure my framing at the beginning is just right, and really making sure that I have a solid looking shot. And you can see I sort of tried to go back and I realized I was going sort of in the wrong direction. And then I brought it back and framed it up. And then I was ready to roll. And then you commit. Check it out. And by commit, I mean you pick a line and you follow that line and you do not correct it. If you try to correct it halfway through, then your drone boomerang is going to look horrible. So choose a line, whether it's straight back like this one, or here I'll go to another shot. Oh, now I'm just up in the Swiss Alps here. Um, oh, here we go. Here's another one. So I'm sitting down, I sort of choose my line, and this one I go back and up. So I'm, I'm bringing the drone back and I'm raising the altitude. I'll speed this up a little bit. Um, raising the altitude. And I started raising the altitude very slowly after I went back a little bit because I wanted it to glide along the water. But no quick moves, no side to side moves, no gimbal moves. It just goes all the way back. Okay, let's watch one more. Oh, this is me trying to ride on a bike uh, and go back, which was sort of a nightmare. Kind of cool, but whatever. Uh, let's see if I can find some other ones that are just raw boomerang so you can see the, the flying. This is the one I, I, I'll show you, and this is one that I ended up um, rotating. But I'll just show you. The raw clip is just straight back with a very, very slight lift. And this requires um, a lot of discipline with your thumbs. You have to sit there and hold this shot in a very delicate, disciplined way. Any jerky movements will ruin the whole thing. So, and again, if you want it to be butter, butter smooth, you don't have to make it butter smooth. Uh, it'll still do, do the effect. But I really try to make these super butter smooth. And this one had a tricky thing because the exposure changed quite a bit and so I had to figure that out. This clip is three minutes and 55 seconds. I was flying the drone back for almost four minutes and it probably went two kilometers out. It's it's a bit of a commitment to get this big epic shot but um, it is totally worth it when you see it sped up. So the key is committing to a line, sticking to that line, not moving your gimbal not moving uh, side to side or the orientation of the drone, just backwards and maybe up. Backwards and up, period. Okay, let's see how to edit one of these things. So I will usually find the very beginning. Um, here, I'll just find one that's maybe a little bit not as complicated as that one I just showed you because that one has some keyframing in it. But um, I'm gonna show you one that is uh, a little simpler. So this one, here we go. So I bring it up here and I get my endpoint. I always find my in and out point. I don't throw the raw thing in. I throw, I find the endpoint like where I want it to actually start, like right there. Okay. 
and I go to the very end and I find my out point, which is right there where it stops, out point. And I'll bring this guy down, okay? Oops, okay. So I have it now. And then it's going to be a matter of deciding when I want it to start to speed up. When, when should it go from just regular 100% playback to starting to get faster and faster and faster and faster? Because we don't want this to be two minutes. We want this to, to ramp up. And that all happens up here in the speed uh, window. I'm gonna open this up really quick. And you can see if you fly down the speed window, you have this line. And this line is basically saying this is 100%, meaning this is just the regular old speed. If I brought this down to 50%, then the clip would play half the speed, okay? And if I brought this uh, down up to 200%, it would play double the speed, okay? Consistently, it would just be double the speed. Okay, now it's playing two times the speed. I want it to be 100. I want it to start at 100. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it down until I'm 100. And now I'm going to decide when I want it to start to go up. So, it's at 100, I want about there for it to start to speed up. So that's when I click a keyframe. And this keyframe will say, okay, this is a transition point. You want a transition to begin right here at this time. But I don't want the transition to go straight from 100 to 500. Okay, let's say let's say I want it to go from 100 to 600. So right now, it will go 100, 100, 100, which is this line, and then as soon as it hits this, boom, it's now 600. I don't want that because that would be like 100, 100, 100, whoa, 600. It just like sped up way too quick. I want it to happen slowly over time. And that's what these little handles are for. If you click this handle and you start to drag it out, now it goes from 100 to 600, but in the meantime, during all of these frames, it's slowly speeding up. So now it's at 200, and you can see right down here, 208, 200, and now it's getting close to 300. So now at this moment, it's 300, and then it's 400, and it's getting faster, and eventually it's now 600, okay? So I like a really long, smooth, and even faster. Like I want it to get going and like really not be jerky. Like that's even a little too jerky. I want it to like really take a while. If you click this right here, you'll get these little handles. You can even drag this so it's a it's not a linear. It doesn't happen at a consistent rate. It happens sort of ramps up in this more organic looking fashion. Um, here it comes. Nice. And it gets up there. Now I don't want it. I want it to eventually maybe even get faster. I want it to be like way up. Okay, so now it's at 2,000%, and, and I'll even make that even a little bit longer. Nice, gets up, boom, and now I want it to slow down again. So now I want it to transition from fast to slow. So make another keyframe right here, bring this down back to 100. Okay, so I want this to end up at 100. All the way down, I'm looking right here to see where my, my line is. It doesn't have to be exactly at 100, but I want it to slow down quite a bit, okay? And I want it to not slow down like from one second to the next, like that. I want it to slow down over time, like this, okay? So, whoops, I have to drag that back out. Uh, so it goes up, it gets, it's up at 2,000%, and then as it gets closer to the end, it slows down, and that's it. Right there, I'll trim like that, save. So now I have my movement. These, the hard part's over. I really refine this movement. Up, and it slows, and I want it to get up there quicker, actually. And I want it to like be up and stopping sooner so that we can start to reverse it. So it goes up and it slows. And now I want it to head back. So I think that's actually better. I just cut off some time. So now it takes 11 seconds to go from there. And if you want it to take longer, you know, like to like really take a while, you can get you know, that, that would be really cool. But for me, I like to do these sort of quicker ones. So then it slows down. And by the time it really slows down, it's now done. And now we're ready to start heading back in. So there are a couple ways to do this. 
Sometimes, if your computer is struggling with all of this time remapping, you can export this piece. You can export this, and so it sort of bakes it, and then you bring it back in. And then you can do what I'm about to do, but I, I can also just nest it right here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm going to hit nest. Okay, and that really sort of seals it up. And I'm just gonna call this boomerang raw. And then I'm going to take that nest, I'm going to hold down Alt and drag and make sure S for snap is on. Oh, S is on, but for some reason it's not working. Um, there it goes. So now it's snapped. And then I'm gonna Command R on the second one, hit reverse speed and boom. Now it goes up and now it reverses back down. So let's watch it now. There it goes. I'm sort of speeding up. It goes all the way, oops, goes all the way up. It hits that peak and then it starts to come back down. Boom. And then this last frame right here correlates exactly with the first frame. So I could take these two, alt, drag, and check it out. And now we're back. Instagram incidentally does this uh, as well. If you output just this video right here, Instagram will automatically start it over again. And so you'll get um, this movement. You'll just wanna make sure, you don't want this black frame. So you wanna make sure that your out point is here when you're exporting. Because if you put your out point here, then it will include a black frame. So I actually go back twice because this, fir this frame right here is the same as this frame back here. So if I stop it a frame early, then it will reset on the first frame and it will look natural. So I often go one, two, out point, and it, it puts it right there, okay? And then you output it. Command M, uh, I like to do like YouTube 1080, you know? And that's ready to roll. Okay, so now let's just quickly go over how I would do this more complicated one of the twist. I think a lot of people are curious about the, the twisty boomerang. Let's see if I can find the raw file here. I'm gonna do this a little quicker and not explain every little thing uh, because I explained it in the first part. I'm just gonna show you how the rotation works for me. And I think I did some of this in After Effects, but the, the concept is the same, okay? So there it goes, goes all the way back. Stop, I'll bring that in. I'm gonna get rid of my in and out points. I'm gonna come in, throw this guy in. Quickly do my uh, speed ramp. There's this, okay. And I'll fly this down. I'll make it go up and up like this. Super fast, it needs to go even faster. I'm gonna make this bigger so it's even faster. Boom, okay. And so now it's ramping up to 7,000. And then about here, I want it to start to ramp back down. Okay. And it ramps back down even more. Okay. And then I want it to head back. But the problem is I want it to not start like this. I want it to be started uh, with me not laying down, but me facing up and down. So. I have my boomerang, I'm going to nest it. Boomerang, lane, raw, it's nested. And now I can start to play with it. I can go in to my effects controls and I can say, and this requires a little bit of animation and understanding, but the idea is I want it to end up like this eventually. Like this is what I want the position, the scale and the rotation to be. So I'm gonna put a keyframe here, okay? To say this is where I want you to end up from here on. But before, if I start to change this now, and scale it up, see how it makes a little keyframe right there? That means now it's gonna travel from there to here. You can see the parameter right here, traveling from almost 200% down to where I wanted it to end up, 100%. Um, same with rotation. I want it to start like this. And uh, position. And scale, okay? So now between the time it starts here and the time it ends up where I wanted it to end up, it's going to travel like this, okay? Now obviously we have this issue here, which 
is not okay. So the reason I, what one thing I'll do is I'll make the rotation happen quicker and I'll make the scale happen slower. That way, as the rotation's happening, I'll be able to, um, and in fact, I wonder if I ring the rotation to not even start yet. Or I guess the rotation should be started. I need to be zoomed in even more, I think, like this, okay? The rotation needs to happen while I'm zoomed in. The, yeah, this isn't totally right. Like it would need to be down a little bit. So anyway, you can sort of play with it. Here we go. Nice. So that worked. And then, of course, you take all of these and you want to go to Temporal Interpolation and Auto Bezier. I would do this in After Effects where you have a lot more control, but this is a kind of quick and dirty way to kind of mess with these, the position and the scale to get it just right. And then the motion in terms of the speed is already done because you did that before. So there it goes up. And then of course I could take this, duplicate it and reverse. Honestly, with this one, I would export it because if I reverse this, I think it might, my keyframes might not track nicely. Let's see. Oh no, it did, it tracked real good. Okay, so there you go. That is how I use keyframes to do this sort of zoomy, weird, spinny thing. And that is how we do them. So there you have it, the drone boomerang. It is such a fun thing to have a big library of drone boomerangs from around the world as a little memory of not only what me and Iz and the boys were doing and what we were wearing and all of that as a selfie, but also as a way to see the, the greater expanse of the place that we're in. It combines both of those. It's small, it's fun to post on social, it's short and easy and digestible. It's just a really fun way to capture your trip. We love documenting travels here at Bright Trip and we have a whole course on it. Um, it's called How to Document Your Trip and it goes into so many different techniques and philosophies around capturing your trip such that you can remember it, but that it doesn't take over your world while you're out there taking pictures of everything. So we have a really balanced way of thinking about this and you can head over to the Bright Trip catalog to check out that course and many others. We're always making new courses and would love to hear what courses you would want us to make uh, on the Bright Trip platform. So thanks for watching today. Look forward to hearing from you in the comments and we'll see you next time.